<laughs> this floor is real slippery. It sure is. Okay, Dex. He said, are you kidding me? Hi, darlings. Oh. <laughs> um, is that going to be a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Your face. Why is my kid watching porn? Oh my god, they're in their jam still. <laughs> what is that? Their dog that's 22 years old. <laughs> Terrified. Are you sure that's <laughs> Looks like a chupacabra, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, here's the thing. There's some people doing work here. Hopefully we can get this episode recorded. I think it just adds to the charm. <laughs> Sure does. Guys, don't buy old buildings. Here's what I have to tell you. Um, hey, <laughs> let's do 10 minutes of silence. 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> the way this is going? Yeah. Yeah. 10 seconds. <laughs> it's our first day back recording after taking a break. We got people working on the building. There's a leak. The dog's here. It's a mess today. It would be. But I'm looking forward to telling you this story. Okay. I cannot wait. Did I tell you that this is the Witch's Magic Murder Mystery Podcast? I don't know. Do you all know that I'm here? <laughs> I'm here there we is. are. <laughs> Here's another thing I had to tell you right up front. Let's do it. All Witch's Magic Murder Mystery episodes are a mix of our personal thoughts and opinions in response to the information that is publicly available at the time of recording. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there can be no assurance that the information provided is 100% accurate. I'm telling you this. So don't come at us. Because the story I'm about to tell you has not gone to trial yet. Oh, okay. So I want to make sure that we're all understanding. Allegedly, this is what happened. Yes. Everything I'm telling you has been reported in newspapers, so it should all be fine. But it's all allegedly. It's all what's been asserted by the prosecution. It's all been Facebook posts made by the people who are accused. That kind of thing. Oh, Mm-hmm. Okay, wow. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do it. This episode is a whirlwind of emotions. It Great. starts out ridiculous, and then we end up mad. Okay. <laughs> Just FYI. My favorite kinds. Okay, so you guys know that we took the last couple of weeks off because I was moving, and Life. we just needed to, like, get settled in and stuff. Just after we had our last recording day, this story broke, and so many of you tagged us. I think you texted it to me. Um. It was in the Facebook group, and I was just like, well, I know exactly what story I'm going to do as soon as we come back. So here we are. Oh, my God. This is the story of the guy whose home was decorated with human remains, Ed Gein style. Yeah. Whoa. By the way, I know a lot of you want us to cover Ed Gein. My gosh, though. I think his name is the one that comes up the most. Yeah. Particularly in person. Like, people around me who yeah. know me, who talk to me, they're like, you know which one you should do. And I'm like, no. It's Ed Gein. And I'm like, you're right. We should. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> right? Kara. Yeah. Kara should do that. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> Megan doesn't even want to hear it. <laughs> I know it. I know the Ed Gein yeah. story. I'll listen to every podcast that ever covers it. Right, but exactly. I, myself, don't want to research that. I just can't. <sighs> I don't want to look at the pictures of it. And there's oh, no way yeah. to avoid the pictures yep. of it. If you're researching it, mm-hmm. I just don't think I can do it. But I am fascinated by the story itself. Right. It's so dark. Yeah. But I know myself. <laughs> I have to have boundaries. Anyway, James Knott was not a serial killer. He wasn't a killer at all. Oh, no. He was a different word that starts with a K. A Kentuckian. <laughs> uh, Kentucky man. <laughs> so there is so much to this story. It all starts back in the summer of 2022. Okay. That's when police in East Pennsboro Township, Pennsylvania, got a tip about possible human remains at the home of a man named Jeremy Pauley. And when officers searched his home, they did find human remains, including organs (gasps) and skin. Oh. And every time I say that sentence, I think the skin is an organ. (laughs) Yeah. I know that. But still. Yeah. I'm still saying it, organs and skin, okay? Okay, Um, internal organs and external. Yes. So, now, this tip, the one that led to Jeremy Polly, it leads to a much bigger investigation. 
I, in my head, call it Operation WTF. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, that it's... investigation uncovers a network of people buying and selling human body parts. And I'm going to get to all of that uh-huh. because that's how James Knott, the Kentuckian, is involved. Oh, perfect. And that ties back to Harvard Medical School, which I'm sure Harvard loves. Yeah, they love it's to be probably going to be in all of their next year's like yeah. literature. Yeah. Um, and I'll get to that. Yeah. But first... Like all their law school classes. I mean, it's going to be huge. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to love it. Um, But first, I want you to know about that initial tip that led to the beginning of it all. Okay. Okay. The first one, the one about Jeremy Polly. Okay. Because first, when I first started doing this episode, it was all about James Knott because he's the Kentuckian and that was interesting to me. Yeah. But then when I started digging into Jeremy Polly, that became the much more interesting angle to me. You're like, wait a second. Yeah. Because, you know, I like people. I like thinking about why are you the way you are. Yeah, how'd you get here? He's more interesting to me. Okay. Okay, so Jeremy was married to Sarah. And he had this workstation in his house. And he was always like, you stay away from this workstation. We're married, but stay away from my stuff. Yeah, just don't touch my things. And she had always done what he told her. But then when he left her, she was like, you know what? I'm going to go through your stuff now. Oh. And he had all these orange, like, Home Depot buckets up against the wall, and they had lids on them. And she took the lid off one. Oh. And it smelled like, I don't know if she knew what it was, but we know now it was formaldehyde. Okay. So when she looked in the bucket, she was like, that's weird. Human organs. (gasps) Human skin. So this article I read about Polly said... This is kind of a side mark. It said, and there's a picture of him. He had, he had a half. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. This is a sidebar. This article I read about Jeremy Polly said he had like a half face tattoo. Huh. And here's the part. That I'm ready. One of his eyeballs uh-huh. is tattooed nope. black. No, no, no. Did you know that you could tattoo an eyeball? Okay, I'm gripping her arm right now. I, so knowing how to, like, being a tattoo artist, like, knowing permanent eyeliner, I know that if you accidentally poke someone's eye, that color is going to bleed through their eye. So, I oh. guess they just bunch of pokes in there and got I guess color so. in. I have a brand new nightmare now. Yeah. And the pictures. Yeah. His pictures are scary. He looks intimidating. Oh, gosh. Um, I don't, I don't I'm going to give him a goog. So, here's the thing. <laughs> Sarah knew that he dealt in this kind of thing, in, in human body parts. Oh. She said this that This isn't new to her? This was not a surprise. Oh. He called himself a preservation specialist, collecting and selling human body part. <laughs> I bet he collected those, too. In a jar. Yeah. He would just, like, collect them. Actually, I know only fans sell that. No. Yeah. Yeah. I saw an article. I, s- I didn't see it. <laughs> I saw an article about it. Okay. We're going to need to t- time out. Are you telling me <laughs> you can sell farts in a jar? Is that even possible? Like they don't dissipate? Even if you put them in a jar? The know. second you open the jar. Who tested that? Exactly. <laughs> it's still good. Look. Look, we're best friends. I don't want your farts in a jar. And I also wouldn't test it for you. I wouldn't be like, Kara, I need I need to know. Does Can you this still smell, smell it? Like Chipotle? It has to be faked in some way. It has to be something that would be like, this will sm- this smell will stay yeah. forever. Cause how else would it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so concerned. Yeah. Poor people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You imagine like a cute little mason jar with like little <laughs> graphic on it. But black lace around the farts. farts. Like a cute font. Farts. <laughs> Hot girl farts. <laughs> and the date of the fart and what she ate. What she ate. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Triple <A. laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Those coffee farts sell for big. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> we're done here. <laughs> yeah, that's all. 
<laughs> Love you guys. See, See you all next week. Right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get back on track from this? So there was this one guy that was with this girl and he dealt body parts. She said he called himself a preservation specialist. That's terrifying. Collecting and selling human body parts. Not parts. (laughs) To private clients around the world. So you call him up and say, hey, Meemaw died. (laughs) I need... I just want to keep her fingers. I need to keep. So she always held my hand. I want to keep her hand. Here's what I've learned through researching this. That's what it, me and you think of because we're not in this world. But it's it's a huge market. Huh. Yeah. Like a black market. It's Type not thing. even that um, much of a. Web. It's not that underground. No, Kara. It's on Facebook. Okay. I just had a Garth Brooks. Oh, kid. I can never let this go by. Every time it crosses my mind, I hope there are other people in the world who still remembers this. Yep. When Garth Brooks initially got on yep. Facebook, yeah, yeah. which was a good 20 years after mm-hmm. the rest of us did, he got on Facebook and he made a video and he went, we're on Facebook. <laughs> and it was, it was, it's like so precious. Reba and created a show and she said, you're home for Reba. That's how I feel about this. We're on Facebook. I'm like, God bless you, Garth Brooks. We've all been here for years yeah. just waiting for you. Okay, anyway. Yeah. It's on Facebook. I mean, I, that, I bring that up so many times in this episode, too, where I'm it's just, just like, like, they're doing it on Facebook. Yeah, because it's so not. the group. Yes. Is on Okay. Okay. Oh, so, gosh. here. Let me just, because. Do they use code words? No. <laughs> huh? Okay. okay. So. I'm so sorry, Dex. I know, baby. We're going down, in a honey. minute, bud. Um, it's not the dealing of human body parts that's the issue. <laughs> and that's the part of this. That's, that's why. I have an issue with that. <laughs> that's the part that fascinates me about this whole thing. That's why it became an episode. Because initially, listen, I'll just to tell you, when you all kept tagging us, I was like, yeah, that's a weird story. But it doesn't interest me that much. Because, yeah. like, whatever. It's weird, but who cares? Yeah. It's when I realized it's not illegal. Huh. That I was like, whoa, wait, what? That's, that's... And then I then I got fascinated by the whole thing. Wow. So it's not the dealing that is the problem. Keep that in mind, and I'll get back to it. It's going to come up. Okay. So Jeremy Pauly, he advertised his collection on Facebook with pictures and everything. Oh. Dom, and then my sources are in the show notes. You can click on them, and you'll see pictures of what I'm talking about. It's got pictures of the post. Dominoes made from human bone fragments. A plastic tub of vertebrae. Now, there's not pictures of this next part. He displays specimens in a china cabinet in their dining room, including preserved human fetuses. Like I said, you're not going to see pictures of that, at least not in the articles that I, oh my gosh. That I put. Okay? Oh, my gosh. Now, when Jeremy and Sarah first met, he was 32. She was 18. Ooh. We can have some feelings about that if we want to. I don't need to talk about it. She was charmed by him. He was the most interesting man she'd ever met. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Who else do you know that yeah. does anything like? If she's like, well, I've never met anyone like you. Of course you haven't. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank God. Ooh. Ooh. She was like, I didn't even know you could own organs, human organs. <laughs> Let me in on this. <laughs> I didn't know it was legal. Baby, I want my life to be that way. <laughs> and he was like, oh, yeah, baby. I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. <laughs> Tell oh. me. When did you last let your your heart heart decide? decide. Yeah. I could open your eyes. Take you wonder by wonder. You know what? Over sideways and under. On a magic carpet ride. (laughs) Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you very much for playing along. Okay. So by the summer of 2022, he had become violent, according to Sarah. Oh. She told police he had threatened to kill her and cut her into pieces if she ever left him. Because he wants her body parts. I mean, he can make some money. So, when he left her, it was because he had been served with a protection from abuse order. As soon as he vacated the home, Sarah checked out his workstation. And oh. that's what led to all of this. Oh, my gosh. Now, for what it's worth, Jeremy's lawyer is saying that his client is being unfairly judged because of the way he looks. And huh? you... Can, and you can't judge a book by its cover. I've already told you. He's tattooed. The way that he looks. Yeah. 
Here's the thing I do want to acknowledge. Before I read much about him, I looked at the pictures of Jeremy Polly, like I told you. Like, Aside oh, from the ha- half face tattoo and the eye thing, he has like a 15 point metal mohawk embedded in his skull. I imagine with the appearance of choices that he's made alone, uh-huh. he's used to being treated a certain way. Right. Yeah, for sure. And then you add the lifestyle choice of being a person who buys and sells human body parts. Who knew? Who yeah. displays specimens such as preserved human fetuses in the china cabinet of his living room. Yeah. This is not a man who lives a mainstream lifestyle. True. Mm-hmm. This is a man who is accustomed to being an outsider. And then I'm sure when he finds his people, right, his people being other people who like buy and sell body parts, mm-hmm. he gets to be an insider in that crowd. Right? Right. Which is probably pretty enticing. Right. It's like when we all found each other. Uh-huh. It's exciting. Right. I'm psychoanalyzing now. <laughs> and it really has nothing to do with the original story. So I'll stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You know, I just like thinking about why people are the way they are. Um, but I do want to point out something important here to remember. Regardless of how weird of a thing you might think this is, how weird of a hobby, <laughs> the legal issues involved are complicated. And I'll get more into that when I get back to James Knott's story. But as a reminder, actually owning human body parts apparently is not, is not a crime. illegal. Outside of some Native American stuff, which we'll get back right, to. Right, yeah, yeah. That's sacred. Okay. But as far as Jeremy Polly goes, remember how I said the dealing of it, that's not the issue. He dealt in the world of oddities. And we know that's an old profession. People have right. been obsessed Tax with the macabre. And, yeah. Yes. Like stealing things from crime scenes. You know, we've done cases where I can't think of oh, it. The one um, where the. It? Her name, her head was in a. The missing head of. What's her Pearl. Name? Pearl. Yeah. Well, things were like the couple was found murdered, murdered beneath the tree uh-huh. and people were selling bark yeah. from the tree. Yeah. Or they're selling cotton candy near where the police are investigating. Yes. Like things like yeah. that. Um, or like in the the founding daddy episode, yeah, yeah, um, where body snatchers were selling bodies to doctors for research. Yeah, this isn't necessarily anything new, but today there are regulations around it that try to keep it from being the wild wild west out there. Oh my gosh! Sellers who deal in human and animal bones have a lot of strict rules to follow, which vary by state. Oh, the issue here, of course, if you remember back from the beginning of this episode. We're talking about Jeremy because he's tied into this network of people who are getting body parts illegally. And it all tied back to this guy who was working at the morgue at Harvard Medical School. And I think that's one of the more interesting parts of this whole thing to me. Is that, you know, again, it's not because it's illegal. And I've never, I've just never thought about this. Because if you had asked me, I just would have assumed it's illegal. Yeah. Or I would have thought, why would you want to buy or sell human body parts outside of science? Yeah. Why would I, a regular person, want to own human body parts? I could just buy the fake ones that they sell at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Right. (laughs) Right. For Halloween decorations. Why would I want to display preserved body parts in my china cabinets? I don't need to. Yeah. I can get the fake ones. Yeah. (laughs) So, but then there's probably people who look at my house and they're like, Megan, why do you have so many books? That's the same thing, right? It's it's, It's eclectic. Right. (laughs) Who needs all of these? Look at this stuff. (laughs) Good ground. My collection's complete. Same thing. Same thing. Uh We all have our things. Looking around. Who you think? I don't know. Sure. Mm -hmm. She's got everything. (laughs) So, Jeremy Polly does have a new girlfriend now. Oh, he did? Of course he does. (laughs) He got a new one? According to her, Jeremy did not know that the body parts he was receiving were not legally obtained. What? Hmm. Whether or not that's true is up to a jury to decide. Right, right, right. right. We are not. Allegedly. We're not making judgments. No. Okay, back to James Knott, the Kentucky guy. Yep. So like I said, after Jeremy's wife, Sarah, found the specimens and realized that there's something off about the way they were being stored, which made her suspect they were being obtained illegally. Uh Uh-huh. This led to a larger investigation, and Polly told, that's Jeremy, Jeremy Polly, 
told the FBI about the network of people buying and selling human body parts. How oh, fun. One of the people involved in this network was Cedric Lodge. Cedric worked Cedric worked in the morgue at Harvard Medical School, or he did, until May of 2023. Dex. Hi, buddy. You're okay. He was fired for allegedly stealing body parts from cadavers and selling them online. He is currently facing federal charges related to those activities. Oh, my gosh. This just makes me wonder how many people send their family members to get cremated and they don't get all of their family members back. Well, just like the the one I done the Patreon, the tri-state crematory scandal, Dex. Yeah, yeah. And that was like a huge one. But remember, I touched on some mm-hmm. others that were like smaller that probably yeah. didn't make as big of a news. Yeah. <gasps> Who? He's watching those guys out there. <gasps> he said, "I know they want to pet me." But this is where it gets weirder, okay. or just more surprising. Just interesting. Officials used Facebook messages to connect this network of people engaged in the illegal trade of body parts, and that's how they connected James Knott to the whole thing. Knott used a Facebook account under the name William Burke, where he posted human remains for sale as recently as June of this year, 2023, in case you're listening to this later. My gosh. Now, do you want to know where he got the name William Burke? A killer. According to the affidavit, here's a quote. William Burke was a serial yeah, killer active in Edinburgh that. during yep. between 1827 and 1828, along with his partner, William Hare. Burke and Hare sold their victims' bodies to Dr. Robert Knox, an influential lecturer. Oh, my gosh. I've heard a podcast about this. In the anatomy department at the University of Edinburgh. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, yep. so you might remember in the Founding Daddy episode, I mentioned Resurrection Men when we talked about the somewhat scandalous ways that scientists and doctors, I'm talking way too fast, going to slow down now. You uh, might remember in the Founding Daddy episode, I mentioned Resurrection Men. Oh, yeah. When we talked about the somewhat scandalous ways that scientists and doctors used to get bodies to study for medical purposes. That's kind of what Burke and Hare started out as, Resurrection Men. Mm -hmm. But then they evolved into something worse. They realized that the the more bodies bodies they had. A tunnel or something at the school? I I can't remember. I don't remember either. They realized the more bodies they had, the more money they could make. So they were killing people so they could sell their bodies to doctors. And it was pretty obvious the doctors probably knew what was going on. Yeah. I just listened to a podcast about this. If it's something that you want to know more about, check out Crimes of the Centuries. It's one of my favorite podcasts. And she just covered them in her episode that came out on July 31st. It's called The Resurrectionist's Murder Prophet. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, in... I think I maybe heard it on like an undisclosed or un, un- probably. I mean, they're like a famous, yeah, case. Anyway, in Polly and Knott's Facebook messages, it just kills me. This is all happening on all Facebook. On social media. We're not talking about the dark web, like this, like Facebook Marketplace. Like what in the world? It, not even Reddit. <sighs> okay, and like code, and it's all still there. Oh my gosh. But it's probably also there because it's not illegal. It's not illegal enough to have to go on the dark web, right? Okay. In Polly and Knott's Facebook messages, it appears that they're negotiating a deal for Polly to purchase body parts from Knott. He's like, listen, I'll pay a little more for these. Do you still have the things in that last video plus the spines? To clarify, for legal purposes, I do Uh not know if Polly knew the origins of Knott's body parts. Right. So when police executed a search warrant on James Knott's home in Mount Washington, Kentucky, they asked if anyone else was there. And James said, only my dead friends. They didn't find any other like living people there. They did find a bunch of body parts and multiple weapons. And his neighbor was like, you just never know who you're living next to. I mean, that's like Dahmer's neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't know who you're living next to. You ain't never, you ain't never know. No. Can you imagine? Forty human skulls, one with a headscarf wrapped around it, huh? spinal cords, femurs, hip bones. The skulls were spread all over the home like decorations. One was on James's mattress, and let's just not ask questions. 
There was also a Harvard Medical School bag inside the home, which again is a product placement that I'm sure Harvard does not appreciate oh, and yeah. did not ask for. They did not want that PR. Um, okay, as for weapons, they found two guns, an AK-47 being one of those, two inert grenades, body armor, and ammunition. <gasps> Whoa, why? Because he's a Kentuckian. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Can't take that away from me. <laughs> yeah. Um, you ain't going to take... We have the right to bear arms. That's right. You got to be ready. Can't take For what? Me. Just be ready. Aliens. Um, and he's only charged with the weapons charges because, again, not illegal to own body parts. It's how you get the body parts that's the problem. Did you murder somebody? That's a problem. But did he murder somebody? No. Outside of Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, there are no federal laws that prohibit owning human bones. Now, some states have their own laws about it, and James seemed to know that because oh. in his Facebook posts promoting bones for sale, he states that, oh, I pressed too much. He states that he wouldn't shot, mm-mm. He states that he wouldn't ship bones to Tennessee, Louisiana, or Georgia, and those states have restrictions on shipping and ownership. So that implies that he knew the rules and regulations, right? Whoa. Whoa. So the last thing I want to read here Uh is a statement from Jeremy Pauly, the guy I told you about in the beginning. He posted this, I believe, on his Facebook page, kind of pushing back against people who were like, what a disgusting hobby you have. And again, I'm trying to make that point, too. To a degree. This is obviously not a hobby I get into. When I say I'm trying to make that point, I'm trying to push back a little bit myself. This is not a hobby I'd have. I'd be too afraid of being haunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night with somebody else's remains in my house. No, that's what I've been thinking this whole time. Like, not how disgusting can you be, but like, that's scary. Right. Those are people. I'd be way too afraid that whoever those remains belong to would be like, why are you not letting me rest in peace? Yeah, like, <laughs> like why are my bones scattered all over? And why do you need somebody's remains in your house? Like, why do you need leave my these people can. alone. Yeah. Right. But I get that I'm into other morbid things that some people might be into. I mean, when we started this podcast, I remember a friend of mine being like, why did you want to start a podcast about that? Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. Which true crime is far more mainstream than what these guys are doing, but I'm trying to be, I'm trying yeah, to relate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here's what Jeremy said. Direct quote. Now, I completely understand it's not everyone's cup of tea. I understand that some people don't show the respect others would like to see. But in my time, I have met some of the most intelligent, wholesome, and respectful people you could meet, Polly wrote. I can see that. Polly stated that his collection of human body parts began as a way for him to conserve, quote, history, restoring it, and appreciating the wealth of knowledge that comes with it. Hmm. There has always been a fascination with death and our own mortality dating back hundreds of centuries. Some fear it, some embrace it, some learn from mm -mm. some fear it, some embrace it, some learn from it. That's just a fact. Polly wrote, some eat it. Mm -hmm. Which, okay, sure. I get your point, my guy. But you were also selling like dominoes made from human bone fragments. Yeah. And then altering. Then there's this one story I haven't told you yet. Okay. According to prosecutors, Uh in the fall of 2021, a mortician whose name I'm going to tell you in full every time I read it because I want you to remember it. She is based in Arkansas. Arkansas. Her name is Candace Chapman Scott. She reached out to Jeremy Polly on Facebook. Again, on Facebook. Social media. Okay. And said, just out of curiosity, would you know anyone in the market for a fully intact embalmed brain? Oh, she was like, I followed your work and I just love it. She went on to tell him that the mortuary where she worked had a contract with a local medical school to cremate donated cadavers. And typically the remains or the cremains, as they're called, are then returned to the families or put to rest in a local cemetery. But Candace Chapman Scott had an idea. (gasps) No. So then over the next year, they had this relationship where relationship she has say it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then over the next year, they had this relationship where she sent him lists. Of... <laughs> it's just too weird. I'm going to try that again. Okay. <clears throat> the point, the problem is I'm getting mad because I know what I'm about to tell you. It's feeling spicy in your brain. Okay. Just, 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 just
Because I, I was real sympathetic yeah. with him. Yeah. So I got to this and I was like, you mother. Okay. Wow. Well, so okay. then over Allegedly. the next year. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah. So then over the next year, they had this relationship where she'd sent him lists of stolen body parts. <laughs> no. And he paid her thousands of dollars for them, allegedly. Uh-huh. In February of 2022, an Arkansas mother gave birth to a stillborn baby boy. His body was supposed to be cremated and returned to the mother. Instead, Candace Chapman Scott, you piece of garbage, stole the baby's remains. Unless it's alleged. I can call her a piece of garbage. I'm going to call you a piece of garbage. <laughs> she sent photos to Jeremy. It's all on Facebook. I oh, mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. She sent photos to Jeremy Polly on Facebook and sold the baby's body to Polly for $300. Th- I'm sorry, what? She then returned so cremains what did to the, un- of unknown, the mom get? Re- cremains of unknown origin. She gave... Candace Chapman Scott gave cremains of unknown origin to the Arkansas mother who thought she was getting her stillborn oh, son's remains. my God. I have chills running up and down my body because yeah. I want to rip Candace Chapman Scott to shreds and also smack Jeremy Polly upside the head. <laughs> yeah. So, now, that's all according to, to prosecutors. So the sources are in the show notes. If it turns out that that isn't true, I will happily come right back on this podcast on all of our social media accounts and I will tell y'all it's not true, okay? Happily. Yeah. I'm happy to say I'm wrong when I'm wrong. But let me tell you, I can make space for there to be all sorts of oh, weird yeah. hobbies Kinks, and hobbies, obsessions yeah. in the world yeah. as long as they aren't hurting anyone. And I don't think anyone should be punished for being weird. Yeah. I will fight for the underdog all day, every day. I can't stand to see anybody being picked on for being different. Right. Having said that... Jeremy Polly, if even that one story is true, that's not okay. You're a monster and yeah. I have no sympathy for you. Yeah. You don't get to hide behind the, oh, I'm being bullied for being weird if there's proof in writing that you looked at pictures of a stillborn child and paid money to add it to your collection. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Okay. My gosh. Yeah. Wow. Right. I mean, that... I think that it's a I think it's entirely possible that what he wrote on Facebook is true. Uh-huh. And then he could have gotten greedy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. For sure. Is my opinion. Allegedly. Based on Facts the information provided. that is publicly available at the time of recording, yes. which is August night. Night. Yeah. My sources are in my show notes. Yeah. My God. But if that one story is true. There's a place for you. Yeah. I don't know how you sleep at night. And Candace Chapman Scott, I don't know how you sleep at night. I hope your bones. I hope you're, I, hope your I don't know if you've been charged with anything, but I sure hope you have. I hope your bones get sold. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me so angry. Okay. That's my story. It'll be interesting to see what happens with this one. Yeah. Yeah. We love you guys so much. We will be back with another episode soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh my gosh. What a monster of a human.